Let's talk now to Georgine Leung. She is a mum who did postnatal confinement and is researching the tradition for University College London. Eddie Chan is with us. Eddie is a Chinese community support worker and he says many in the community think illness is retribution for something they've done wrong in the past. And Lucinda is with us. That's not her real name. Lucinda lost her mum to cervical cancer. Uh, Lucinda was 20 and her mum was 53. And her mum didn't get help, medical help, until the disease was advanced. And in fact, she was diagnosed in A&E after she had collapsed. We're protecting Lucinda's identity because she thinks her family might disown her for speaking out. And Lucinda, thank you very much for talking to us. And I'd like to start with that, if I may, why you think your family might shun you if they knew you were speaking out like this? Um, probably because we don't really talk about our feelings. Um, um, we're quite private people, right? So, um, y yeah, you just wouldn't. So, is there some kind of shame involved if you do speak out? Um, yeah, because we're quite proud, really. Right. So, if you admit and you've got a problem, then you don't feel proud anymore. And that is an issue when it comes to a serious serious illness like your mum had. You were eighteen when your mum found out she had cancer, and she just wouldn't go to the doctor? Um, no, so I was, um, I remember she always went for a cervical smear test mm. and um, I remember I was 12, because remember I was in year 8 at school then, um, a letter came back saying that that test came back abnormal um, and she never went back to get it treated. Then three years later another letter came to the door um, urging her to get it treated. I also urged her to go to the doctors. Um, she never went and then um, she abruptly told me that she was fine. Um, I was 18, three years later, went to university um, and then my mum was um, getting really short of breath um, and I actually thought she had um, high blood pressure and I knew she didn't want to go to the doctors. I kept on begging her to go. She wouldn't go. And when I was at uni, um, I went to the Chinese doctor, told him, look, I think my mum's got high blood pressure. Mm. She won't go to the doctors. Can you provide something that would treat this? And he did. And I gave it to my mum. She accepted it. And she thanked me for it. But little did I know um, that she didn't have high blood pressure, but in fact, quite the opposite. Um, she'd lost that much blood because the disease had spread so far into her body that she was getting out of breath when moving about. Um, How much time. pain do you think she was in then? She still wasn't willing um, to seek help. A but, lot of pain, um, but she just got on with it. We all do, we just get on with it. And that's part of your tradition, that you endure and you put up with things? Um, yeah, you just don't... I'm quite emotional, because I'm British-born Chinese, mm. um, and my friends would probably say I'm quite emotional, but over the big things like this, um, yeah, we just keep keep it to ourselves. We don't really speak about feelings or um, fears mm. because you want to be proud. Yeah. Eddie, let me bring in, in you. The, I mean, you have a very personal experience of the, the stigma around cancer and not speaking out and not, not informing family and friends. Tell our audience about your son. Uh, this actually happened 20 years ago now uh, when my second son was five years old and he was diagnosed with childhood uh, cancerous brain tumour. Mm. And in those days, my own parents stay 50% 50, 50 of the time in the UK and 50% of the time in Hong Kong. And they were in Hong Kong then when, when he was diagnosed with uh, cancer. So we told our parents, my parents, and they didn't react to it. And in fact, they didn't say anything. They, they didn't even you know, uh, call me or, or set, uh, send me a letter and ask, asking me what, what happened to, to the grand, 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 grandchild. Why? Why, why didn't they want to know? Why didn't they uh, react? Uh, I think there's a lot to do with um, the traditional Chinese thinking of uh, retribution, stigma. Uh, you must have done something wrong. That's why this is karma that related to the family. and. And there are lots of also gossips that, that go, go with it. And lots of people when they think that 
a family have done something wrong, whether, whether it is the, the immediate generation, it could be due to the grand, grandparents, it could right. be due to the parents. If they, they've done something wrong, they believe that that will be reflected to the generation further down, mm. down the line. What, what do you think of that? Uh, obviously, for, for myself, I, I'm a very open chap, up-to-date, modern. I, I, I think it's, it's pure luck. Whether you're a good person or a bad person, you can still get terminal illnesses. Mm. I mean, I, I, I know even healthy people, really, really healthy people, can die of coronary heart disease or heart attack. And I don't think it's, you know, people are always encouraged, for, for my, my line of work, I always encourage people to live a healthier lifestyle. Of course. And this is important. But the, the, I suppose the yeah. issue from all this, uh, Georgine, is, is, is about, uh, about seeking medical help if, you know, you don't have to put up with the pain. You don't have to put up with the suffering. Um, I want to talk to you specifically about confinement, this month that, you, that new mums stay in their house um, after giving birth. And I think you're researching this. There's a belief, I think, that if you do confinement in the wrong way, then there will be repercussions later on in life. That's right. So the belief, the health belief of not doing it right. So not just by doing it, but there's a certain way of doing it. So by not doing it well, there will be repercussions in later life. And that's why it's so important to do it well um, during the month of confinement. But it's rubbish. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so it's very hard to say whether or not any problems in later life would be directly related to the practice of confinement, but the health... No, 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 it's, 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 it's not hard to say. There's, there's yeah. no link, is there? No, am, am I yeah. in a parallel universe? <laughs> Eddie, you're, you're smiling. I'm smiling because it, it is true. I mean, I know a lot of non-Chinese. Mm. After giving birth, they, they could easily take, you know, their one one week's old baby to the shop in the supermarket and I, 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 I don't know why why did I mean, this is it such a tradition is it is it offensive if I say that if I say there's mm. it's rubbish that there is no link between the way you do confinement or confinement at all and something that happens later in life would that be offensive? I think it goes um, it goes back to the health beliefs so mm. the set of traditional beliefs that mothers um, would do um, all sorts of different things to make sure that they recover very well to avoid um, going into a state of poor health in the future and of course we would never be able to say in 30 40 years time if that illness is to do with confinement yes that that wouldn't be any evidence to do with it but the attention the awareness and um, being focusing on the mother's health during a period of vulnerability is mm. quite important because often after childbirth the attention goes to the baby and mm. very often we forget about the mother's health okay that point a number of our audience mm. are agreeing with they're saying actually that, that that might be a really good time to just basically stay in and, yeah. and bond with the baby but tell me how not washing your hair has an mm. impact on I mean that's one of the beliefs how is that relevant so um, after a woman has given birth, mm. her body is seen to be uh, of a cold state, so all her joints are open. That's the belief that cold wind might easily go into her body. So by not doing anything um, which exacerbates the coldness goes into the body can help to protect her and um, to pay we, we, we live in for recovery. But we live in Britain with central yeah. heating and, and yeah. gas fires and yeah. stuff. So th I think that's the issue. Um, between how do you balance traditional mm. um, beliefs and modern health practices. So from the women I have interviewed in the past, they seem to actually do a, a bit of both. So they don't necessarily do all the restrictions, mm. but they actually adapt to some of the uh, some modern health practices and they, they would adapt to their own. Right. Yeah. And uh, actually, in China, mm -hmm. some mums don't get out of bed for two weeks and they, they eat a diet rich in calories um, to, to get, f for what purpose? So food is very important mm. during the month of confinement because that ties into the traditional belief that food is healing and also warming foods are particularly important. So women are expected to follow a set of um, rules, do's and don'ts, particularly eating certain foods and not eating certain foods. So for women who are eating particularly nourishing foods, foods which are calorie dense, mm. and sometimes having, say, rice dish at every single meal, so three times, 
times, three to four times a day, for example, can be much more than their typical diet right. um, would allow. So that could which, have... Which is quite a, a difference, for example, to sometimes the pressure that Western women feel when they've given birth to, you yeah. know, get back to being thin and lose the baby weight and all the rest of it. Definitely, mm. yeah. So there doesn't seem to be a pressure for them to lose weight very quickly. The attention would be for her to recover her yeah. body, to get her back to normal. And after the period of, say, 30 days or up to six weeks, then she could, you know, start thinking about um, going out and exercise and losing weight. But that's not her priority mm. um, immediately after birth. Okay. Okay, a, a final thought from all of you. What would you say to any members of the Chinese community watching now who might be in pain, might think there's a, an issue with their health, but, are, but are, are not going to the GPs, not seeking help because of traditional beliefs of, of putting up with it and enduring and, 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 and maintaining your dignity and privacy? What would you say, Edith? I would just say go and make an appointment to see your own GP. It is so important that you seek help and support when you're, not, you're in pain and you don't feel comfortable, mm -hmm. and you know there's something not quite right with you. And there's no shame with seeking help, is there? No, it isn't. Yeah. It isn't. What would you say, Lucinda? Um, just echoing Eddie's thoughts, really. Um, go to the doctors, make that appointment if you think that something's wrong, something's not right. Um, seek medical help, and also, I think, um, listen to your family as well, because they're there to support you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all of you for coming on the program. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Still to come before.